Well, welcome to another episode of Purple Insider Extra. Matthew Collar along with Sam Ekstrom here as we continue our series, What Happens to This Guy? Let's talk about Daniil Hunter, Sam. There's a couple of ways the Vikings could go with Daniil Hunter. They owe him a lot of money on the fifth day of the league year. So that acts as a deadline for them to decide whether they're going to cut him whether they're going to try to trade him and then take back some of the cap space, or if they're going to sign him to a long-term contract extension, what happens to this guy, Daniil Hunter, Sam? It feels to me like he's a prime extension candidate. I, I think that while the Vikings have gotten into trouble trying to keep around aging veterans who might not see the end of that contract, I think Daniil Hunter is young enough and talented enough that he's worth the financial and injury risk. And the injury risk is real. You know, it's it's a neck one year. It's a pectoral last year. Um, you know, fortunately, his, his lower body's been good. We're not talking about a knee, a torn ACL, or, or anything like that. Um, so I think that this is someone worth extending. It gives you immediate cap relief. It keeps around a foundational piece of your defense, which needs a ton of help. I mean, you already need probably one defensive end. If you lose Hunter, you would need a couple of them. Um, and you need to keep around, I think, some of these holdovers from the previous regime. And, and I think Hunter's a special player. And he proved this year that coming off a year missed, he can still be unbelievably effective. He was on pace to be like a top five, top 10 pressures guy. But the number is untenable. He can't play it out at $26 million. I mean, that's more than the average annual value of Miles Garrett's contract, which is $25 million per year. So you can't do that for one year for a guy. But I think he'd be worth extending. Yeah, the question on extending Daniel Hunter is how do you decide on a price for somebody that has only played seven games over the last two years? Because Daniel Hunter, when you compare what his production was, uh, not only last year, but going back to 2019, he deserves to be among the highest paid players at his position in the NFL. And yet when you factor in the injuries, are you trying to sign him to a shorter deal because of that? Because you don't want to get burned again by more injuries. Are you trying to say, Hey, we can't pay you that much money when there's always the possibility that your body breaks down early because you think about Daniel Hunter. Uh, it, there was always sort of the jokes of, Hey, did you know Daniel Hunter is younger than this guy or that guy? They would draft somebody two or three years after Hunter and it would be someone older than him. Um, but that means he's been playing football for actually a really long time now since going back to what, 2015. So, yeah. um, he is got a lot of mileage on his body and recent injuries. Now that doesn't mean he can't be a good player going forward. It just means that if he's asking for Khalil Mack type money, miles Garrett type money, that is a really difficult price to pay for the Vikings. I agree that they can't bleed talent that has any chance to be good in the future because this is not the type of rebuild where you're talking about get rid of everything, tear it down to the screws, and they're going to tank and win two games and try to draft high in 2023. I, I don't think that that's their route. So you want to have young-ish type of talent. But all of a sudden, Daniil Hunter isn't as young as he used to be and will be very expensive. And the other thing, Sam, is too, defensive ends, their prices are just going up. I, I mean, I think it's very important for them to build a great defensive line. But I also think of when the Raiders traded Khalil Mack, everyone lost their minds. How dare they trade Khalil Mack? And the Raiders got a lot of really good draft capital to build out of that, as opposed to just one player that you have to hope that player stays healthy and continues to produce it at a very, very high level. Yeah, and and maybe you think eh, it's you know it's a tad easier to uh, develop a, a defensive end than it might be a, a cornerback or something who are also very highly paid. And with average defensive ends, you can still be a successful defense. Whereas if you have like a huge hole um, in the secondary, sometimes you can get picked on more easily. So I don't know if it's it's quite as correlating to defensive success um, if you have a, a elite or a pretty league average or below league average defensive end. But I could see the Vikings targeting uh, that three-year deal that that a lot of these defensive ends are signing right now. You you know, Dante Fowler, Carl Lawson, Cameron Jordan, um, Leonard Williams. Three years, 63 for Leonard Williams. That's $21 million per year. Maybe that's something that, that Daniil Hunter could point toward as a comparison. I doubt the Vikings would want to give him five, which is what the top guys are making. 
um, probably a shorter term, but still around that $20 million mark. That would put him in the top five paid in the league. And I'm guessing he believes he deserves that. And it's hard to argue with him. It's just that the in- injuries are such a factor and that could lead to a bit of a stare down. Right. And you brought up a good point that, you know, when it comes to replacing somebody like Daniil Hunter, it's very hard to replace one guy, Daniil Hunter, uh, because he is one of the very best at his position. But in terms of creating pressure, creating sacks, they still found a lot of ways to get a lot of sacks this year. It was just spread out between different people schematically. And that may have hurt some of their coverage and asked a lot of their cornerbacks because they had to blitz and things like that. But uh, I think it's not impossible to find rushers off the edge is in the same way when people talk about who's going to replace the quarterback. Well, there are only a handful of great quarterbacks in the league, so that that's harder to replace. But with edge rushers, you could draft them high. You can sign them in free agency. Guys who have not had such a, a serious injury history recently. I think that's all possible. Um, but a major part of this too is what Daniil Hunter has meant to the franchise. I mean, he has just been sort of your consummate professional type player and also what it would mean to move away from him. It would really say this is a complete changing of the guard. Nobody is safe. And, uh, you know, we're going to just do the most sort of pragmatic and ruthless thing, which I think I would respect, but also is a little bit of a harder sell to players in the locker room who are going to be here long term of like, oh, wow, they're kind of tearing this thing down to the screws. So sometimes the most smart decision by the dollars and cents is not always what is the right thing to do. Let me pose this question back on you. Who is the most tradable asset or who is more desirable to trade? Is it Kirk Cousins or is it Daniil Hunter? Because I think you could argue that Hunter might even have higher trade value based on his age and where he ranks among his position in the league. Yeah, I think what's difficult about both of those is that the team that's acquiring either one of them has to work out a contract extension before that even happens. Because if you trade Daniel Hunter right now, um, his cap hit is 26 million and he's owed this gigantic roster bonus, I think is 18 million on the fifth day of the league year. So the other team can't just take that on. Uh, That's way too much for almost every team in the league. So you have to have somebody ready to give him an extension. And then I think there's there would be more trepidation. And also the thing about why Kirk Cousins, I think, would have more trade interest is just how hard it is to find a quarterback. If you're New Orleans and you had a positive point differential last year, despite playing Trevor Simeon and Ian Book, you're probably saying we're not that far away. We just need the quarterback. And I don't know if there's any team that says, the thing we desperately need is one of the most expensive pass rushers in the league. So I think that that uh, is a trickier option. Some people have brought up uh, just cutting Daniel Hunter to make the cap space. I don't think that that would go over very well um, (laughs) either. So they have a lot of decisions to make. That's why we're doing the series. What happens to this guy? Give your percentage chance that Daniel Hunter is a Minnesota Viking next season. I think it's 75 I think it's it's pretty strong chance. I think there there would, unless Daniil has a strong pull to like leave. Maybe he doesn't want to be part of a defensive rebuild. Maybe he's disenchanted with whomever because of you know the the way the last two years went down for him was probably pretty hard. And um, who knows what his dealings have been behind the scenes? I don't know if he was excited or disappointed about this new management because we haven't had a chance to talk to him since October. Um, So it's hard to know where his head's at, but I think it's still better chance than not that he returns. I agree. I'm only going to go 60 40 though, because we don't have a good idea yet about how Quasi Adolfo Mensa wants to do business and wants to build this roster. I think that every ownership and management would say it's not a rebuild. It's a retool. It's a reworking of the roster. Uh, But you know, then you get into those decisions and you have to make the right one, even if it's not the most popular. So we will see what happens to this guy. Make sure you're listening to our podcast every day. Just go type in wherever you get your podcast, Purple Insider, purpleinsider.substack.com is where you can read our written work as well. And we will catch you later here on Purple Insider Extra.